Welcome back, everyone, to the CBN Cast. I'm Seth. And this is Samuel over here. Welcome to episode two. Yay! <laughs> so, um, today we're going to dive a little bit more deep into Indiana Jones and um, film cameras and stuff like that. How cameras have got better over over time and how... Yeah, yeah how, how film cameras uh, evolved from... Just film in, uh, into uh, now the digital age. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Mm-hmm. Longer episode than the first one. Yeah, that was a little short episode there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Samuel actually has a couple notes on uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, I think we have one movie left. Is that right? Yeah, I think we're, we just finished the, what is it called? Cruise. Crusades, yeah. Sorry, I can't. Last I'm Crusade. Last Crusade. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, my dad thinks that's the best movie uh, out of all of them. It's pretty good. Actually. It was pretty good. Yeah. I I preferred it over the second movie. Yeah, the second um, definitely was not great. It just I, I you mean, weren't a huge fan of it. It was a little. I thought it was a, a bit better different. than what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, Indiana Jones. So the release date was in June fifteenth. 1981, and um, a lot of the music was composed by John Williams. I actually yeah, a legend in uh, <laughs> music composing for. Oh really? I didn't actually know that. <laughs> well, yeah, he I he wrote he wrote all the Star Wars music. Um, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. He wrote E.T. I think. Basically, all the Steven Spielberg <laughs> movies probably probably worked with him. He probably knew him very well, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they they all uh, yeah Steven Spielberg and mm-hmm. John Williams. Worked uh, together quite a lot, so. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really interesting how, like, film cameras work and everything like that. I mean, I mean now you can you know just press record, but then, you know, on film cameras you really have to be careful with footage and like how you um, you know, manage your time on it because, I mean, can you delete? I can't believe I'm asking this, but like, can you delete film? I mean. I, don't, I really don't think so. Well, so. you can throw it away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <laughs> just just think of it all as a uh, it's is all like real life instead like digital. Mm-hmm. You know, if you didn't like it, you just delete it and yeah. it's gone. You don't have to worry about it now. Sometimes that was worse than other times. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of uh, small uh, movie houses. You know, losing data left and right. Just one day worth of footage just gone, and they they have to you know, reshoot everything. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, film film is a chemical process. Um, mm-hmm. And I watched a video the other day on how, you know, how they used visual effects in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I know this is kind of not really a visual effects podcast, but <laughs> I will tell you that the the way that they create that you know, a simple green screen now is uh, on on some programs like a couple clicks and then boom, you know, you got a pretty good green screen on your own. You can fine tune it and stuff like that. But, you know, back in the day, it was you you created this mat mm-hmm. and then it was basically like a hole and then you put whatever you wanted on top. It, it, it's It's a really interesting kind of chemical process that uh i wish we could you know it's it's kind of difficult to recreate now um, Uh because well no one really knows how to use film these days time consuming time uh, i can't speak time consuming yeah time (laughs) consuming it's it was very time consuming and uh i'm i'm telling you those were like the early visual effects days and Mm -hmm. those Especially those first Star Wars movies were really good. Yeah. But mm-hmm. one thing that I would like to mention is, you know, when it, whenever you're seeing a movie on the big screen, you know, like later, uh, what what should we do? Last Crusade. That's mm-hmm. a good example. Um, they're they're running off a 35 millimeter cameras. Now I'm not a film expert, but from what I can tell, it gives you a square image. That's not really good. So basically what they have is, um, you know, they stretch it out. So they stretch it out to get the full frame. Well, not full frame. Yeah, like the uh, full, uh, 
Yeah, how would you, how would you explain that? Almost like a full full pixel? theater yeah. <laughs> full theater thing. And that's how they did the um some of the more modern Star Wars, I think. Uh yeah, cuz they cuz they they actually did it on film cameras, mm -hmm. which was actually pretty cool. So they were using original uh equipment and uh so there's this thing like in the last crusade where it's an anamorphic lens. Have you ever heard of these? Yeah, I have. Yeah, so they're basically they're they're quite fascinating and uh modern cameras don't have this cuz before before the ages of digital, you know, you could what's the word to say? You could you could stretch out the the um, image yeah. and it would it would display this anamorphic uh, thing in the background. So when you have a bokeh effect where the uh, background is blurry, mm -hmm. the the blurriness of it, like nowadays, it's just a circle because well, that's your image, like your lens is a circle. So the um, you know if you have like Christmas lights or something like that and yeah. it's a bokeh effect mm -hmm. then you know you have uh, those circles but in the olden days there's this just weird thing about it where it just does not look right and that kind of gives it that old time feeling mm -hmm. and I've seen actually people re kind of try to revisit this now um, by using 3d printed discs put in front uh, uh, in front of the sensor now it's not on on the back end of the camera mm -hmm. uh, like uh, sorry lens yeah sure. it is before so you have the lens and the light goes through it mm -hmm. and then you have your um your 3d printed thing it's kind of looks like a this kind of in the shape of an eye wait so they they 3d printed these yeah so they're literally just discs that oh, you so this is what they set in they were try to recreate yeah, they're trying to recreate uh, it in uh, digital cool. form. And so what it does is it actually doesn't change how the camera sees everything. Like, it just sees everything normally. But when you have, when you, you know, you pull focus and there's the out of focus in the background, the mm -hmm. bokeh just does not look quite right. And and that kind of gives it that old-time feel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that definitely. that's kind of a little bit of rundown of anamorphic lenses we should probably do a little bit more on it mm -hmm. and uh you know all the older movies all indiana jones mm -hmm. movie uh, probably most of them probably not the fourth one i don't know when the fourth one was made do, do you know or uh probably some around the 1980s 90s i think sorry i haven't looked this up people well i i, um. I mean i see the trailer and He's kind of old in it, <laughs> so hold on, yeah. let me check. Well, anyways, I mean, I love film because it's like, I mean, they, a lot, you know, back then they focus more on storytelling than they do with production. I mean, obviously they still, you know, have really great equipment, but, you know, they really focus on the story rather than, you know, what you see on camera. And then that's probably why, you know, most old movies are really um, very popular and, the story is great on them and stuff like that, and and they just uh, yeah they really focus on the story and um, and they really try to tweak every single bit of the you know films like that because I mean with film you know you have to you know be wise on how you use the film because <laughs> otherwise you're throwing away film basically so yeah. um, and uh, really you know jump yeah. cuts jump yeah. cuts now mm -hmm. you. You couple clicks and you're done, uh -huh. and uh, you know they didn't get to play with it. You know they were just nudging it in the olden days, and if you needed to nudge it a couple frames over, it's like all right, now I'll go get my tape and my glue and see if <laughs> yeah. I can recreate it. Uh -huh. uh, by the way, uh, the last Indiana Jones movie was made in 2008, and there's oh, supposed wow. to be a scheduled oh, Indiana awesome. Jones five in 2022. Ooh, that's and so the first one was made in 81. Second in eighty four, um, the third in eighty nine. So it took them like twenty or so years before they mm -hmm. created the fifth one. The only okay. reason is because I uh, I saw a trailer of it. I'm like, 
Harrison Ford's kind of old and <laughs> old in that yeah. one. Um, yeah, I have, I have seen him in a few interviews where he does still look this like he has some traits that are kind of the same that you could see, but he still does. I mean, I he's mean, he's like nineties. Yeah, and he, I mean, <laughs> he's still, still making films. He's still <laughs> out there. So is uh um Dick Van Dyke also. Um, he he's in uh. Mary Poppins Mary Returns. Poppins. That was the last one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he was actually, I think he's actually in something else, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's in his nineties. Yeah, still pretty active and <laughs> still doing some films and enjoying them too. You know, which is good. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, going back to Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. uh, most of like. Lucasfilm is kind of, you know, is one of the greater uh, film companies uh, to ever kind of surface that in Disney, which is starting to become a little bit questionable uh, with their new reboots and remakes. Yeah, they have uh, remade a lot of movies. (laughs) Yeah, they... Lion King, um, what's the other one? Uh, Aladdin... um, yeah, they've <laughs> redone a lot. Mulan. Mm-hmm. They redid Mulan. They did Lady and the Tramp. Oh, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Mary Poppins. Uh-huh. Well, Mary Poppins was more of a continuation, mm-hmm. but um, it it doesn't have the same people. Well, obviously, Dick Van Dyke was one of them, but he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't the same. He wasn't character. casted as his, as his original. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, what's the name? Um, Actor. Chimney sweeper. Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. chimney sweeper, and they they didn't mm-hmm. have any chimney sweepers in that new one. Yeah, it's a little well, bit no, disappointing th- in that. I think they did. They just they weren't like sweeping anything. They were just dancing around light poles. I guess well, no, no, no. Those yeah, they those they were, were not chimney sweepers. Oh yeah. They replaced the chimney sweepers with uh, the light the, bulb, the, like no, the light something turner honors yeah. and off <laughs> people. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I Lucasfilm, you know was you know, is a good was a good film uh company and then George Lucas sold it to Disney which oh, okay. effectively kind of all the Star Wars movies after that you know prequels some people are like the prequels weren't very great and I I don't know I haven't fully watched them through but I can probably say that they were probably not as good as the original ones and the original Star Wars had practical effects Mm-hmm. And not very many visual effects. Actually, most of the visual effects was the lightsabers themselves. Yeah, and and actually, that was probably really hard to do back then. Cause, actually, I mean, you had to cut in the film seriously? to, yeah, oh, that's crazy. I, I haven't, I, I need to look up more on that, but mm-hmm. it was, it was a crazy process how they created lightsabers as well. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes they even did it where they, they just had poles and they were just fighting with poles and oh, then really? they would cut out the light and oh, so they would know where to place it and every, everything like that yeah. yes mm-hmm. correct and but the problem is sometimes they they couldn't use a pole uh-huh. so the um uh the visual effects people sometimes just had to guess on where the hilt of the lightsaber was oh yeah <laughs> so you can definitely tell in those scenes it's like jumpy. It doesn't always line up with the hilt, um, and mm-hmm. I think that's one scene where he's fighting a uh, like a trainer thing. I don't I don't remember the exact name. Um, and there's like the animated snap motion chess table in the background and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, when Luke Skywalker is. Oh, do they do they animate that like stop motion or? Yeah. Um, oh, you mean like CG. <laughs> No, no, stop motion. Oh, like really? they had oh, cool. I think they probably had some type of clay figures or something like that. Yeah. Which is yeah. kind of funny cuz you're into that stop motion type of stuff and Yes, uh. Uh-huh. But uh you know, it was it was definitely an interesting uh interesting topic to go over. We'll mm-hmm. probably have to do some more visual effects things on like Lucasfilm films. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And uh back to talking about Indiana Jones. Yeah, um, sure. Let's see. What is that guy's name? Um, he was like, I guess, the second most popular actor in Indiana Jones. Probably we saw him on uh this uh 
So Josh Josh Gates, he has this uh, TV show, and he's been doing a Tonight Show and everything like that. So he had him on his show, and he was he was saying that um, they're going to create a new film, but you know he's he wasn't invited to yeah the I think he was talking about um, Indiana Jones the fifth movie. So yeah, yeah. and uh, I think Steven Spielberg was supposed to direct it, but I guess he isn't now. Oh really? Um, so why is that? I'm not too sure. Hmm. Um, I only heard it somewhere. But he probably decided to make the. Th- I mean, he agreed to make the fifth one. You know. Probably. Yeah, he w- he was supposed to be the original director. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. But now it doesn't look like that. So hmm. I'm a little bit curious to see when that. Well, it's supposed to be 2022, so we got two years to see uh, how how it comes out. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but back to the originals, uh, for a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were we were talking about how you per- well you personally didn't like the second movie. I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was just the storyline was like a little odd, and um, it just didn't like match the first movie. I mean, sort of. It was just wasn't as like you know jungle like you know, escaping from certain place kind of type of feel. I mean, it got better as the movie went on. It just didn't start out, you know, very exciting, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Um, yeah, I don't I don't think... It, it got more exciting toward the end, and there was a yeah. huge fight scene at the end. I won't spoil it for people <laughs> who haven't seen it, but uh-huh. I feel like most people listening to this have seen it. But uh-huh. it was... You you kind of walked out a little bit earlier, and you you kind of missed the final fight scene. <laughs> um, and I did watch one fight scene. It was like I think it was like where they entered this like city and like people with swords were fighting or something like that. I don't know, but uh, I mean they do try to incorporate some interesting uh, scenes in there. You know, not just the same thing over and over. You know, like oh it's a dramatic talk scene and everything. You know, there's some action. Too, which is kind of what I like about Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, yeah, it is an action film, and that's the whole Basically, point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that entire trilogy. So is Star Wars. Well, Star Wars is more of a a fantasy type thing. Uh, most people mm-hmm. think it's sci-fi. It's actually fantasy. Oh, really? Huh. The reason I really don't know why, but I know it's fantasy and not sci-fi, um, huh. which I found kind of interesting. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. <laughs> But, uh, y- you know, I I think the third film definitely brought back that kind of... Yeah, Indiana Jones feel. In- Indiana mm-hmm. Jones feel. Um, and the, obviously the first movie kind of set the foundation of that kind of feel. Yeah. Um, and I- Indiana Jones, I mean, they they do such a good job of having some laughing moments and having some serious moments, some scary moments, you know. I mean... Really, I mean, yeah, such a good job, and really all good movies basically have that, but, I mean, yeah, it, it is really interesting how they um do that. Uh-huh. Yeah, and what I, I, I have another kind of funny fact for you. <laughs> um, the uh, Indiana Jones movie, the first one, mm-hmm. uh, they, they didn't know what to rate it. Um, really? Huh. Yeah, so... The reason it's PG is because there was no in between between PG and R rated. There was no such thing as PG thirteen back in the day. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah. Indiana Jones and uh, probably a couple other Lucasfilm films mm-hmm. kind of made that um, made that uh, PG thirteen area. So, do you know what the fifth one is going to be rated? Just curious. Um. Now I'm not too would. sure. I'm assuming it will be probably the uh, PG-13 because yeah, all of, mm-hmm. pretty much all of Lucasfilm films are mm-hmm. PG-13, uh-huh. either PG or PG-13. Do you think that the third movie or the other movies would be rated PG-13 if they made them now? Probably. I mean, I would assume. Well, obviously, Raiders of the Lost Ark is mm-hmm. rated PG-13, but when the original yeah. rating went up, it was rated PG. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's it's gonna be there to stay, but in reality, it is a PG thirteen film. <laughs> yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's kind of the main the main 
part of uh, Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. And I actually have one more. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So. Got to grab your list. <laughs> <laughs> I have to grab my list. We're we're just starting out here, so we'll figure this out in a better way once <laughs> we keep doing more podcasts. Um. So True. They actually like made a mechanism for that. You know that gold idol thing. You know that. Ark that, of the Covenant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ark okay. of the Covenant. Yeah. That he was grabbing. So. It was supposed to, like, kind of, with its eyes, follow Indiana Jones, but actually, they uh, didn't end up putting that in the film. Oh, they really? Did, yeah. and they Interesting. Did, they did actually do a lot of, uh, I was watching just today, some deleted scenes and everything. And it's really interesting, you know, to see how it would change the story, you know, if they put those in there. So, that's why the director sometimes tells what scenes can be deleted or not deleted or add some more scenes. There's a lot of scenes better. in your favorite movies that are either were extended versions of scenes that were cut or completely yeah. cut mm-hmm. scenes altogether that you never realized uh-huh. that can totally change the game. And totally, e- yeah. there's Definitely. there's even sometimes where parts of you know the scene are left behind that are not actually the scene. Um, and yeah. you don't realize it, but if you put that scene in, it makes that little confusing part make sense. Yeah. Like uh-huh. some, like, I, I can't remember what the name of the film is, but there, there's this part in the film where this, uh, I think it's an astronaut calls to home base and it really makes no sense why he does that. But there's an entire deleted scene where he's having yeah. a conversation with them. Oh, really? So huh. that that kind of clears up confusion on why why did he just randomly call home yeah. base? Why why did he do that? Yeah, and I think that's mainly the reason why they somehow I mean they delete scenes because they wouldn't just I mean and just think about that though like all that work put into the scenes sometimes they have to delete them but I mean still it could be the difference between having a failed gross mint or what is it called i don't know grossing grossing in the movie or you know where they don't even make their money back so or i mean even just a good story they want to have a good story you know so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah definitely and um a lot of times too deleted scenes are mostly because of the pacing yeah so uh if it's going too slow yeah uh they may cut one or two scenes. Um, I think that's what happened in Spider-Man: Far From Home. Oh, really? They uh, hmm. they had a in the trailer. They had an entire um, a postal. Scene. Oh, uh, right. yeah. The, in the trailer, they had a section of a deleted scene. Oh, that's so. There's that's a section really where he's in the post office getting his passport ready to go on huh. uh, his adventure. But they ended up cutting it uh, due to pacing things. Huh. Uh, mm-hmm. You could probably find it on the internet, mm-hmm. um, but. And I I, yeah, I was just reading it. in my uh, book. It's it's uh like have you heard of the if you've heard of these stuff for dummies books? Um, oh, definitely. I've yeah, read um, too many of them. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm reading filmmaking for dummies. Um, so it's actually pretty interesting. It is from like they do talk a lot about film in there, even though it is from like you know 2011 or tw- I don't know, just a long well, time. 2011 ago. 2011 was still kind of the height of the film yeah. versus digital type thing, and that's when they is that when they made uh adventures of tintin that we talked about in our last episode yes they and made that um mm-hmm. i can't remember and if you haven't checked that things. out go and check our other episode and make sure to subscribe to that and everything like that yeah and like it because yeah <laughs> we're, we need a little more support but we're just starting out so mm-hmm. yeah but uh you know the height of film versus digital was quite big yeah um mm-hmm. uh I, r- I remember a lot of you know, YouTube was just kind of getting up there. Like it was starting to get big, uh-huh. and uh, especially like some of those. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see how those you know really popular YouTubers just started. I was just watching Casey Neistat's first vlog. It's really interesting. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, uh, you can get back to what you're talking. Yeah, about. um, but you know, YouTube was kind of one of the main one. Like now, YouTubing is a career. You know, there's mm-hmm. hundreds and probably thousands at this point that do it for their job. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like 10 years ago, that was starting to get unheard of. Like there was probably 10, 10, 10, 20 YouTubes 
YouTubers that were doing it full time. Yeah. Um, you know, and it was it wasn't really a thing that you know was a career, a film career. And now, yeah. you know, some some kid can make a film and post it on YouTube and get recognition for it instead of having to go through film school. Yeah. Uh yeah. trying to get a job at a major company. Mhm. And that's the same for like visual effects as well. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I use Blender. Blender is free, open source. I'm not sponsored, by the way, but not, just not we, we like their uh, <laughs> software, though. It's yeah, we we nice. really like their software, and most of it is like you now you can do this all at home on your laptop. That's not very great at you know keeping up with stuff, <laughs> yeah. and you can make these amazing films. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sometimes questionable films, but you know, most sometimes amazing films, just from the stuff that you have. Um, you know, YouTubers, they didn't start out with big budget cameras, big budgets, making, you know, you, you know, they just made YouTube videos. Maybe even with their phone, you know, starting out. Yeah, with Mr. B started out with his Windows phone. Oh, really? <laughs> Rip Windows phones. <laughs> I didn't even know that existed. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they they existed for a short time period of time and okay. they're currently obsolete but he started with a windows phone and then he ended up getting like now he's spending millions of dollars a year yeah it's crazy millions. and i think his like least expensive video was like i don't know what fifty thousand dollars a hundred thousand <laughs> well he usually for each you know like sometimes like last to leave Sometimes is like ten thousand dollars. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you know, s- now some of his stuff, like he did a huge one where he gave away a million. Yeah, that was that was crazy. And <laughs> sometimes it's a hundred thousand dollars. You mm-hmm. know, stuff like that, G- crazy, crazy amounts of money, and that was all from him on his Windows phone, counting to hundred thousand or something like that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so and, yeah, it really shows how. You can, I mean, start off, even if you start something off where it's really not that great, it can somehow end up, you know, can end up really good or can end up being better at that thing, you know. I mean, I bet Steven Spielberg, I I mean, I bet when he first was directing or wonder if he even did films, I mean, he was just, I mean, everyone, you know, has to learn, so. But uh, Yeah, we had to learn, too. Uh, (laughs) Pretty much every single filmmaker, YouTuber had to learn. Uh-huh. All the filmmakers, all the famous uh, directors and stuff like that, they had to learn somehow. And, uh, you know, some people are just like, well, I want to, you know, get the best camera and the best video editing software and the best yeah. uh-huh. everything. And at that point, you're just like, start with what you have. Mm-hmm. You know, what y- y- you got a phone. All right. You already got a camera and a video editor all wrapped into one and you know you you have an email address cool you can create a youtube account and yeah mm-hmm. you're done then you have yeah mm-hmm. you're making videos mm-hmm. many people think that you know making youtube videos i mean it used to be the whole intention of youtube was it was actually supposed to be like a social media uh type of uh content I guess. I mean, most people call YouTube social media, but now it's more (laughs) become uh, entertainment, Mm -hmm. per se. Um, And, you know, it's not like an Instagram post. It's a YouTube video. There's Uh a lot that goes into it. So it's not just, you know, recording on your phone really quickly. So many people think that they need huge, bulky equipment and uh, expensive audio and stuff like that to create YouTube videos, and that's not the case. I mean, you can en- eventually, once you learn about that stuff, you can eventually build up your, you know, collection of film gear. But, I mean, it's good just to start out with whatever you have and just continue to learn from, you know, what you have made and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started video editing on a Windows 7 computer using Windows Movie Maker. When was this? <laughs> uh, a, too long ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I moved up to iMovie. And uh, yeah. now 
I can edit in Premiere Pro now I don't actually have a computer that can run Premiere Pro and I do not want to pay the ridiculous amount yeah, I mean, for it, Adobe Cloud. Yeah. I have it, I just don't <laughs> I don't pay for <laughs> We're it. We're using Shotcut now, which yeah. is it works. It's uh It's not great though. Not great, but it's it, open source. It, it does the job in it. Uh it has pretty good color grading, pretty good filters and editing and text and uh can do different transitions. So it's I actually it it's actually a pretty good editing software for how free it is. Um, yeah, uh, definitely. There's a lot of cool actually. effects in it that I do like. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, you know, it, like the main thing is you can start with anything. So mm-hmm. that is kind of it. Uh, uh-huh. Hope you guys will see you in the next video. Yeah, and... Uh, um, Not the next video, uh, next podcast. Yeah, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and hope you enjoyed... Uh, us rambling about uh lots of movie stuff and uh indiana jones um if you want to check out our other vi- our other podcasts make sure to go to that and make sure to subscribe and um share it with your friends like i said last time and uh hopefully you enjoyed it um if you uh really are looking to for us to do a few uh different other filmmaking type podcasts just um try to I don't know. Can they contact us? I don't know. But <laughs> Maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> probably um, in the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, see you later. Bye. Bye.